These people are occupying a shelter which contains those supplies which are furnished by the federal government. This is an austerity type shelter. It has a capacity of 50 people. It is safe. The food is nutritious. The water is pure. Each occupant has room enough to sleep. The medical supplies are sufficient to cope with most common ailments. And the sanitary facilities are adequate. But this shelter can be made a more livable place to spend a week or 10 days. It is not necessary for communities to limit their shelter supplies to the minimum furnished by the federal government. Each community is encouraged to augment the government stock to whatever extent it considers feasible and desirable. Generally speaking, anything which will increase comfort, improve health, or raise morale is desirable, provided it does not take up too much space and is not annoying or injurious to any of the occupants. Chairs, for instance, can mean a great deal, not only for the comfort, but also for the morale of shelter occupants. Cots and blankets make a contribution not only to the morale, but also to the health of occupants. Bunks can be even more useful and much more saving in space, especially if they are in two or three tiers. Safety also is a factor to be considered. Since there is always the possibility of fire, fire extinguishers are useful and comforting items to have around. So are pails of sand. Distraction and amusement are essential, especially if there are children in the shelter, so that toys, puzzles, games, and playing cards are valuable items to include. So are books and magazines. To bring comfort to people who may be in great need of it, Bibles and other religious books and supplies are highly desirable. While the government furnished medical kit is adequate for most normal requirements, it is not intended to cover unusual demands. Special medicines can be life-saving for people who do not have an adequate supply with them. Also, the special needs of infants should be considered when stocking a shelter. Baby powder can be an important source of health and comfort. So can disposable diapers. A wash basin with a germicidal solution at toilet locations is a useful sanitary addition. So are paper towels, disposable tissues, and disposable washcloth packets. In order to keep in touch with the outside world, certain types of communication equipment can be included. A telephone is very useful if the telephone system continues to operate during the emergency. In case it doesn't, a battery-operated two-way radio would be desirable. We have just been informed that the radiation level at the public square has now dropped considerably.
Even one-way battery-operated radios can be useful. Shelter life is much easier to bear if people do not feel completely shut off from the outside world. Good ventilation is also a big factor in the health and comfort of shelter occupants. So, a fan or even an air conditioner can be very helpful. But these items may require still other items to operate effectively. A filter to remove radioactive material which might be sucked in through the vent. An auxiliary generator to supply power in case the power system is shut down. And extra fuel to run the generator. The generator can also be useful in other ways, of course. To provide lights in the shelter in case of a power failure. And lighting can be a great source of comfort to people who must endure long periods of waiting. For this reason, an ample supply of flashlights could be included with plenty of extra batteries. Even candles can be useful in an emergency. Since they use up oxygen, however, they should be used only in a shelter with an adequate air supply. Tools also may come in handy in a shelter, not only to maintain vital equipment, but in some cases to clear blocked exits. Maintaining an orderly and clean shelter is essential. Therefore, a supply of the necessary cleaning materials should be on hand. Even such simple items as pencil and paper are sometimes overlooked when stocking a shelter. And these items can make a big difference in the smoothness and efficiency of the shelter operation. With these, a shelter log can be kept. Rosters, work schedules, and other important announcements can be prepared and medical histories of the sick or injured can be recorded for future reference. All of these things are important in one way or another to the health, comfort, and morale of shelter occupants. But perhaps nothing is more important than extra food and water. The federal government provides sufficient containers to hold three and one half gallons of drinking water for each occupant. An additional three and one half gallons or more per person is desirable. This will enable people to wash up or even bathe occasionally or even to wash such things as food containers or necessary items of clothing. However, if water is made available for washing, certain other items must also be included, such as wash basins and soap. In the selection of extra food to be stocked, certain general rules should be followed. All food should require a minimum space for storage. It should have a long shelf life. It should involve little or no cooking, and it should contribute as little as possible to the waste disposal problem. Canned foods, such as stews, hash, and vegetables, are useful to vary the diet. But some of these foods require some means of warming them, as well as the necessary plates and utensils for serving and eating them. For infants, it is desirable to have on hand a generous supply of an all-purpose baby formula, plus a variety of pre-cooked baby foods, plus an ample supply of canned milk. This type of food will also be useful to the aged and infirm.
These are but a few of the foods which should be considered when preparing to stock a shelter. Generally speaking, any food which can be stored safely for a long period of time requires little or no preparation and has a moderate salt content is a good choice for inclusion in a shelter's supplies. However, any food which presents problems either in storage or in preparation should be avoided. Careful consideration should always be given to the selection of all additional supplies and equipment with which a shelter is stocked. Anything which will contribute to the health, comfort or morale of shelter occupants is desirable, provided that it poses little or no problem, that it does not constitute a health or safety hazard, that it does not take up too much space, and that it is not likely to annoy any of the occupants. The main object of shelter living is to survive. However, community supplies and equipment which supplement those items provided by the federal government will make shelter living more enjoyable, comfortable, organized and pleasant.